Okay, now I want to uh, finish off chapter 28 on electric potential. And in fact, last time we really just talked about electric potential energy. Now I want to define electric potential. So it comes from electric potential energy per coulomb. So the equation uh, for electric potential, electric potential is written as V uh, equals U, which is that electric potential energy of Q plus uh, whatever is the source of that electric field, divided by Q. So the units of electric potential is uh, joules per coulomb, and that's called the volt. One volt, or one uh, V, is equal to one joule per coulomb. So this is a kind of weird thing where the symbol for electric potential is V, and the units for electric potential is also V. We're using the same letter here for uh, the quantity electric potential and the units of electric potential. Uh, and here is a battery. So this DC battery is a source of electric potential. In particular, uh, it's designed to have an electric potential difference between the plus and the minus side of, it says, 1.5 volts for this battery. So the electrical outlets in your house are also sources of electric potential. In this case, uh, it's actually AC, so the potential difference between uh, these two holes actually varies on a cycle of 60 times per second, 60 hertz. But on average, the electric potential difference between these two holes is 120 volts. So you have to be very careful, actually, if you're making a measurement like this, that you don't get zapped. It's very, very dangerous to stick any kind of metal into an electrical outlet, obviously. Uh, so we keep saying electric potential difference. Another word for electric potential difference is voltage. So instead of saying the electric potential uh, difference from one side to the other is, uh, is 120 volts, you can say the voltage is 120 volts. So electric potential is a property of space. If you have some source charges over here, they alter space somehow so that the electric potential over at this point is V. Then, if you put a, I guess, kind of a probe charge here, Q, at this point where the electric potential is V, it has an electric potential energy of Q times V. So, how do you use the electric potential? Well, it can cause things to move. So, we had from before that there's energy conservation. Kinetic plus potential is, uh, is constant, so final equals initial. So, if you put a positive charge in a region where the electric potential is increasing towards the right, well, it will have a tendency to speed up towards the left. Okay, so what will happen here is it will start off with a high electric, higher electric potential, so a higher electric potential energy, since Q is positive. As it moves towards the left, uh, the potential decreases, electric potential energy decreases, and kinetic energy increases. If it starts off with a velocity towards the right, then what will happen is electric potential will increase, so the electric potential energy will increase, and kinetic energy will be transformed into this potential energy, so it will slow down. So here's that energy conservation equation. Uh, this table from your text just points out that negative charges do the opposite thing. So a positive charge tends to speed up towards decreasing electric potential and slow down if uh, electric potential is increasing. A negative charge will speed up towards increasing electric potential. So it'll move towards higher uh, electric potentials. And if, it's, if it goes in the opposite direction, if it's uh, moving towards uh, decreasing electric potential, a negative charge, like an electron, will slow down. Okay. So let's look back at chapter 26 in which we introduced the parallel plate capacitor. What that is is two metal plates separated by some distance d. Uh, d is much, much less than the size of these plates, where uh, if they have an area A, the size is about square root of A. And on each plate is a charge. There's a positive charge on one plate and an equal amount of negative charge on the other plate. Uh, Q uh, is the amount of that charge, and eta is Q divided by A. That's the charge density. So if that's the case, there will be an electric field uh, half of it's coming from the positive plate, half of it's coming from the negative plate, but it has an equation. It is eta divided by epsilon naught, or Q divided by epsilon naught times A. And it always points from the positive to the negative plate. That's the electric field. Today we want to talk about electric potential. 
So the electric potential, so the, so the electric field is constant between these two plates. The electric potential varies constantly. So the equation for it is that constant electric field strength times S. Okay, so this is like a slope. The electric field is like a slope that is constant. So if you look at a plot of this electric potential versus S between the plates, it goes up linearly because this electric field is, is constant. And then we say that the electric potential difference, or the voltage between these two plates, uh, is actually equal to the electric field times D, where D is the separation between the negative and positive plates. So if we know what the voltage is of a capacitor, and we know the distance between the plates, we can compute the electric field strength as that voltage divided by D. So this implies, if you look at the units here of electric field, it should be volts divided by meters. But in the first slide today, we told you that electric field has uh, units of newtons per coulomb. Actually, not, it was last time we told you uh, electric field is newtons per coulomb. So these have to be equivalent, and I will show that next. Okay, so let's do a voltage units check. Uh, the definition of electric potential, V, in volts comes from the electric potential energy, U sub E in joules, of a charge Q. And you write that as being U sub E is equal to Q times V, the voltage at that point. And the units of that, units, are joules, is the a unit of energy, uh, is equal to uh, coulombs, the unit of charge, times uh, volts, the units of voltage. And uh, if you want to get newtons, to get uh, newtons for force, what you want to do is use the fact that force equal or work equals force times distance. So that you can get the fact that uh, joules is equal to newtons times meters. Um, and then from that you just say that, so we'll take this fact and lugging in up there. So we have that newtons times meters is equal to coulombs times volts. And then I'm going to divide both sides by m over c. So I can say newtons times meters divided by m, sorry, divide by m times meters times coulombs is equal to coulombs times volts divided by meters times coulombs. Uh, the meters cancels meters here, coulombs cancels coulombs here, and then we arrive at uh, what the textbook says is that a newton per coulomb, a unit of electric field, is equal to a volt per meter. So these are both units of electric field E. Okay, one newton per coulomb equals one volt per meter. So we're still thinking about the parallel plate capacitor, and I'd like to look at different ways of representing uh, the electric potential. So what's going on in real life is that this is a 3D situation. You have uh, a two-dimensional plate, and then there's some distance towards the right here, another two-dimensional plate, and there are planes called equipotential surfaces where the electric potential is the same. So it's zero all over this negative plate, uh, one third of the way between the two plates. Uh, this might be 0.5 volts, uh, two thirds between the plate of the way between the plates is one, one volt, and this positive plate might be at 1.5 volts. And here is a two dimensional plot of volts versus meters. Okay, so this potential graph is possibly uh, more useful, I guess, to you. Another way of looking at it, uh, again, here in 3D, we've got uh, a, a plate uh, at, 
s equals zero, uh, the negative plate, the positive plate over here at s equals three, and I guess the uh, electric potential will increase as kind of the slope. So uh, a contour map looks like this. You draw the two plates in two dimensions, and you draw dashed lines, these dashed greens lines, green lines showing where the electric potential is uh, the same. So again, one third of the way between the plates, you'll see this line at 0.5 volts. So everywhere on this line is at 0.5 volts. Everywhere on this line is 1.0 volts. And between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor, you have parallel lines, uh, parallel equipotential lines. So here's these parallel equipotential lines between two uh, plates of a parallel plate capacitor held at 1.5 volts. It turns out the electric field vectors are always perpendicular to equipotential surfaces. And they always point from higher voltages towards lower voltages. So the electric field points in the direction of decreasing electric potential. So uh, it turns out where you choose the electric potential is zero is arbitrary. So uh, normally the tradition is you choose the negative plate to be at zero volts. And then the, in this case, the positive plate is at 100 volts. And uh, here are the equipotentials. If you had chosen to say that the negative plate is at negative 100 volts, then the positive plate would just be at zero volts. And the difference here is, uh, is still 100 volts between these two plates. I wonder why this says delta V is 50 volts. <laughs> OK, so 50 volts is the difference between half the distance, as the, as the voltage between these two equipotential surfaces. And once again, if you called the negative plate negative 50, positive plate positive 50, you'd have the same situation. Delta V between these uh, two equipotential surfaces is 50 volts, or 100 be between the, the plates themselves. OK, so we've been talking about uh, parallel plate capacitors. Next, I want to talk about a point charge. So if you have a point charge Q, it has electric potential at some point over here due to this charge Q. The way you measure it is you would put a, a little probe charge Q prime at that point. And if it's at a distance R from the source charge Q, the electric potential energy of these, this system is uh, Coulomb's constant, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, times Q times Q prime over R, remember? And so if you want to get the electric potential, you just divide by Q prime. And so the electric potential is that electric potential energy divided by Q prime. So that's equal to Coulomb's constant times Q over R. Very nice, simple equation. The potential of a point charge Q extends through all of space, but it goes down as distance as 1 over R. And we've chosen the zero point of the electric potential to be V equals zero when R equals infinity. So once again, we'll struggle with ways to represent this. So really, the equipotential surfaces are spheres, all concentric spheres centered on uh, this point charge. But the way you would graph it, the potential graph, is that it goes up to, I guess, infinity for a point charge at R equals zero, and then drops down uh, and asymptotes out to V equals zero at R equals infinity. And the contour map ends up looking like this, concentric circles in 2D. They're, uh, this elevation graph is maybe a little useless, but uh, these contour maps are, are pretty useful because you'll see that the electric field will actually be pointing radially, always perpendicular to these equipotential surfaces. It points outward in, in this case. And so uh, in, this is all three-dimensional. And this, uh, so if you have a uniformly charged sphere of radius r, the electric potential uh, is outside that sphere is identical to is if it had if there was a point charge at the center of that sphere. So outside the sphere, the electric potential is Q, uh, the total charge of the sphere divided by R. And so uh, if and it turns out if you know what the electric potential is at the at the surface of that sphere, then Beyond that sphere, you can use uh, the sphere's radius is capital R. You can use capital R over R times the voltage of that sphere. And 
this plasma ball contains just such a charged sphere at the center uh, where the voltage is some high voltage and then if you touch your finger to the outside this outside surface is at zero volts and so you can get little lightning bolts uh, that travel through the plasma carrying electric current from the high voltage center to the zero voltage out at the edge. Okay, so uh, the electric potential uh, of several point charges is just the sum of uh, the electric potential due to each uh, point charge. So basically electric potential, same as electric field, uh, obeys the principle of superposition, except it's easier with electric potential since these are not vectors now. Ve electric potential is a scalar. So you can just add up the electric potential from all the, all the point charges. And so, so one simple one is the electric dipole. If you have a positive uh, point charge next to a negative point charge, you add up those uh, Q over R plus negative Q over R, and you get these nice equipotential surfaces that uh, close to the charges themselves, they're almost circular, and they get more and more uh, kind of egg-shaped, and there's a straight line equipotential halfway between the two charges of a dipole. And so these kind of contour maps come up a lot. It turns out that if you map out the electric potential inside a human body or on the skin of a, of a, of a human, it looks a little bit like a dipole. You have a negative and a positive. It's a little bit distorted here, but th this is essentially looks like a dipole field, uh, which varies around because the heart is actually electrical.